Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to calculate the velocity of an object which is accelerating at a constant rate. You should then be able to describe the acceleration of an object falling through a fluid. In the last video we looked at acceleration. We calculate acceleration using this equation. Acceleration equals the change in velocity divided by the time. And remember you're not given this equation in the exam. Now if an object is accelerating at a constant rate, then we can use a different equation, and I'm showing you that here. The final velocity squared minus the initial velocity squared equals 2 multiplied by the acceleration multiplied by the distance. Now I want to make a couple of points about this. Firstly, you are given this equation in the exam, so you don't need to learn it. Secondly, this is pretty tricky, so I think it's more likely to appear on the higher paper than the foundation. I could be wrong though, so if you're a foundation tier student, then you do need to keep watching but please don't panic over this equation. Also, you should pay close attention to the second part of the video, as that's more straightforward. Here's a sample question. A car is driving at a velocity of 8 meters per second. It accelerates by 2 meters per second squared to a final velocity of 12 meters per second. Calculate the distance traveled. Okay, so here's the equation, and we're calculating the distance. To do that, we need to rearrange the equation like this. The final velocity was 12 meters per second, and the initial velocity was 8 meters per second. The acceleration was 2 meters per second squared. Putting these numbers into the equation gives us a distance traveled of 20 meters. Here's a question for you to try. A cyclist is moving at a velocity of 3 meters per second and accelerates to 5 meters per second over a distance of 50 meters. Calculate the acceleration of the cyclist. Now, for this question, I've rearranged the equation for you. So pause the video now and try this yourself. Okay, so the initial velocity is 3 meters per second, and the final velocity is 5 meters per second. The distance traveled is 50 meters. Putting these into the equation it gives us an acceleration of 0.16 meters per second squared. Here's a final question for you. A train has an initial velocity of 20 meters per second. It accelerates at 5 meters per second squared, over a distance of 50 meters. Calculate the final velocity. Now in this case I'd like you to rearrange the equation yourself. If you're a higher tier student then you should be able to do this. If you're a foundation tier student then don't worry because I'll be giving you the equation in a second. Okay so here's the rearranged equation to calculate the final velocity. I'd like you to pause the video now and carry out this calculation. OK, the initial velocity is 20 meters per second, and the acceleration is 5 meters per second squared. The distance is 50 meters. Putting the numbers into the equation gives us a final velocity of 30 meters per second. OK, we're going to finish now by looking at how objects accelerate towards the Earth. I'm showing you here a skydiver who has just jumped out of an aeroplane. Now the key fact is that when any object falls towards the surface of the Earth, it initially accelerates at around 9.8 meters per second squared. This acceleration is due to the force of gravity acting on the object. Now as the skydiver falls, he experiences an upward force of friction with the air particles. This is called air resistance. And after some time, the force of air resistance balances the force due to gravity. At this point, the object stops accelerating and moves at a constant velocity. Scientists call this the terminal velocity, and you need to learn that expression. This applies to any object falling through a fluid. In the case of the skydiver, the fluid is air, but we'd see the same effect with an object falling through a liquid. Now the terminal velocity that the object reaches depends on the object. Some objects experience a greater force of friction due to their shape, so they will have a lower terminal velocity. Remember you'll find plenty of questions on acceleration in my Vision Workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above.